All right, welcome back everyone. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing something a little different. Um, as you guys know, in my previous whitefish outing, I had lost power to my Helix 5 halfway through the day, so I had to fish blind. Um, I figured, hey man, I gotta find some more alternative power source, and um, I really debated on whether or not I wanted to buy a lithium battery, or I buy one in the near future, probably, but currently I'm just trying to save a little money. So what did I decide to go on? I decided to rely on one of these guys. I currently have three of these guys. I have a five hour, two five hours, and a 12 hour um, battery. So to that, I'm decided to go with this. And what this is, if, I, if you guys don't know, Milwaukee actually makes two of these, um, two different versions of these um, additional adapters. So what you do is you take this guy, you plug it to this guy and this adapter actually has a USB port along with a 5.5 millimeter jack so in addition to that I purchased six of these comes in a pack like this it's fairly cheap I believe it's like eight bucks just for this whole package but they come with male plugs and to this I'm gonna be hooking up to uh, female disconnects that's what they are so yeah, so I'm gonna be rigging these up to both my camera and my Helix 5 and I'm gonna use that as a alternative battery source. So, all right, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it. All right, both my Helix 5 and my fishing cameras have these um, quick disconnects already on them, female quick disconnects, and they also have the male uh, disconnects on them too, just like that. So the plan is to hook up this 5.5 uh, millimeter um, male port to one of these quick female disconnects. And from there, I, I could just quickly connect them in whenever I need them and I, I, I could just take them off if I don't, if it's just like, it just happens to get in the way. At the same time, I could still use them and connect them to my lead batteries or lithium batteries in the near future. Okay, so to begin, what I did was, um, I, I already did to one of them, is I take these ends that already are, these wires that are already stripped, I kind of just take them and I fold them in half, okay? Fold them in half, get them started, and just like that, pinch it down, and now they fit these uh, female disconnects perfectly. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's actually like, there's a little stop right there, and actually it's sort of nice and flush. The wires are in there nice and good. All right, so yes, I know I should be using a crimping tool, and I'm gonna be using this, this guy, this plier is actually pretty blunt, so that's why I'm using this. Um, if I were you, use an actual crimping plier, uh, but I just happen to not be able to find mine, so I'm gonna be using this instead. So I'm just gonna crimp in place. Personally, I like crimping toys. Uh, for me, I just feel like it's just more snug that way. Um, I'm sure you don't have to, but it's just a preference. All right, there's one in, it's locked tight. Um, just so you guys know, these female quick disconnects, they come in black and red. Um, but they work the same regardless. It's just uh, it's better to keep for um, keeping things organized. But I don't feel like I need to go buy a, a, a black negative uh, disconnects just to let me know whether or not uh, I'm using I'm plugging the right one in because I could just look at the cord color itself. All right, there's the next one and that one, just like that. They are snug. Okay, so I am actually gonna plug this guy in right off the bat. And let's see if this works just using this just as is. So it's going to take a little work because these are fairly new. So that's why it's not snug, like sitting quite snug right away, right off the bat. So a little playing with, as long as it's good. Um, I'm not going to show it on camera, but I'm actually push, going to push these guys all the way flush. Right now it's just like a trial and error. All right, so now I'm going to take this Milwaukee adapter. It slides right into place, just like so. That's gonna be the port that I'm gonna be using this guy's plug into. But like I said, it does have a USB port right there too for like charging phones or charging battery, or GoPro batteries or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in. And I'm gonna switch this on. So that there should be a power source. My battery is fully charged. All right, and then let's see. Okay, so everything is hooked up. I do have it plugged in. Power switch is on. 
And it, I know it looks funny, but all this wiring is going to be tucked inside of my um, case. All right, let's see if this actually turns on. There we have it, just like that. Let's get it out of this phase and let's see if it can actually give me a, a decent battery read. Sorry, get that off there. This is the one thing that I don't like about um, Hummingbird. Any um, fish finders takes forever to get into the main screen. There we go, up and alive. See, that's the other thing about um, hummingbirds is um, actual battery readings. I don't feel like it's always accurate. Um, this is a new head. I had to take it in and get it um, get it replaced because of uh, one problem being the battery. And obviously it's still not working as it should because it should be 100% you would think. And um, the other problem was the screen went dead on me um, on one of my outings. Like it just wouldn't go into this actual uh, flasher screen. So what I ended up doing off film was uh, I added this heat shrink wrap tubing onto um, these two ad adapters. Reason being was um, they will kind of prevent these guys from touching each other while they're still plugged into the battery, the Milwaukee battery. And also it keeps everything nicer and tidier. Um, so highly suggested. The, uh, the heat shrink tubing that I used was this marine heat heat shrink wrap tubing assortment. I believe I got this from Harbor Freight. This is just leftover stuff that I have from uh, when I actually do like electrical work on my boat and on my uh, kayak. But yeah, the size that I actually ended up using was this one right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. The one and a half D times uh, three dash one and then half inch in length. I believe that's diameter and length. Um, that's the size I ended up using. Tubing looks like this. I had pretty much just cut this in half. Um, something that I suggest you should do is when you guys are actually putting these guys on, have them kind of hang over a little bit because when uh, you do heat it up to shrink it, it does shrink a little partial way down. Uh, partial way down. Um, I did try to do that, but clearly you guys can see it shrunk more than I anticipated. But I guess that's still better than nothing in reality. Anyways, how would I hook this up? Usually, when it's hooked up to the, uh, the lead battery, slide these guys on, it would look like this. Just like so. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Just like that. Nice, clean, and flush. So when I'm actually switching over to the Milwaukee battery, I'm gonna remove these guys off. Reason being is I don't want this, lead, this um, dead lead battery to start draining from this Milwaukee battery. So that's why I'm disconnecting these two guys. And then I could simply just plug this in, switch the power on, and it is currently live now. So now I could actually turn on my Helix and it should be running. Um, when I am actually planning to store this guy in here, I could simply just put this guy in there, keep these two separate terminals facing opposite ends so they don't touch. If they do end up to touch, um, it could cause a short and it could actually probably fry my power head. So that's why that's the point of the shrink wrap and that's the point of me keeping them at opposite ends. And then I could pretty much just tuck this wiring in just like so. And you could just close it up just like that. All right, guys. So these guys work. Um, this is, again, this is just another alternative. Um, will I ever go to actual lithium batteries? Yes, I will probably in the near future, but then like I said, they're just so expensive currently for me right now. So this is a cheaper alternative. This adapter itself, I believe when I bought it online, it was only like 17, 18 bucks. You buy, if you buy it in stores, it, it's gonna cost you like 30 bucks. So keep that in mind. Also these um, male 5.5 millimeter adapters, I believe on Amazon, they're like, Eight bucks a p uh, eight bucks for uh, a pack of six. You can hook them onto uh, multiple electronics that you do have. Um, these female disconnects, they're fairly cheap. I believe they're like maybe three to four four dollars a pack for a pack of like ten. And you can never go wrong having too many of these guys because they are useful. Um, and yeah, the other thing is this marine heat shrink 
tubing assortment. I believe this is like 15 bucks, but in reality, you don't really need it. Um, I only got it because uh, it just made everything look a lot neater, and also I just like the fact that it was more of a barrier so that those two uh, ends, metal metal ends, couldn't touch each other and cause a shortage. But that's the main point of them. All right, guys. I hope you guys learned something from this video because I know I did while I was actually filming this video. It gave me like multiple possibilities of like things that I could do, projects that I could you know, use these these things on in the future. But yeah, um, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys and get out there.